Hey guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's video I've got something a little bit different. So today I just realized that this is going to be my 500th video and that I've just passed 170,000 subscribers here on YouTube. So I'm really excited about that and uh, just as a sign of thank you to you guys I decided to do a, a little bit of a different video and for this video, for this let's call it 500 video special, I'm going to go through every architecture tool that we have in Revit and just really quickly explain each tool, how, did, how does it work. So maybe for some of these tools you're going to learn completely how do they work and for others maybe it's just going to get you a little bit more interesting in that, interested in that topic and then you can explore it on your own. So that's what I'm going to be doing in this uh, tutorial and in the description of this video I'm going to be leaving all of the links to some of my more comprehensive and advanced tutorials on each of these tools So if you're interested in checking out some of these tools more in depth uh, Then feel free to browse those link in the description of this video Also the first link in the description takes you to my patreon So if you want to support me and if you want to get some of my advanced Balkan architect courses that are all over one hour long I have or over 33 hours of content over there. Check it out. So first link in the description. Also there you can find all of my Revit project files as well as uh, as well as uh, find some one-on-one -on -one tutoring from me if that is what you're interested in. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's get into this quick tutorial on each architectural tool in Revit. Let's see what we have. Let's get started with the select panel on the architecture tab. So the select panel includes only one tool and that's the modify tool. You use that tool to select items. So like this elevation sign over here, we can either hover over it and then click or you can do one of the two ways of selecting multiple elements. If you click and then hold the left mouse button and then go to the left side, everything you touch will get selected. But if you click and then go to the right side, everything you completely encompass will get selected. So those are basically the three ways that you can use the selection tool. And here we have a drop menu of some options that you can turn on and off or for your selection, uh, basically options. Okay, moving on to the build panel. So here we have the first one is of course the architecture wall. So you click here, you click once, you click once again, and there you go, you have a wall. Here as you can see, you have many more ways to create that wall. You have many more tools for placing that wall, but usually it's just a couple of clicks. Here you have some basic settings. So when you go into the wall tool, here you can set the height of the wall. If you set it to depth, it will go from the level on which you're on down. If you set it to height, it will go from the level on which you're on up. Here you have how, how up do you want to go? So you can go to level 2, level 3 or unconnected and then here you can type in the number. Next we have the location line. So do you want it to go, are, are you drawing the center of the wall or center of the core or finish face exterior interior or core face exterior interior. Then we have the chain option. So if you turn it off, you just create one wall and then you have to create another wall. But if you turn it on, you just go like this and basically you can create walls indefinitely and they're all chained together. Now let's delete this. Moving on, uh, let's see what else do we have. We have the offset option, so you can set this to one meter and then whatever you draw, it's offset by one meter. You hit the space key to toggle it from one side to the other. And then here we have the radius option if you're doing some arcs or whatever. And that's pretty much it. Same options you have here on the properties panel. When you select the wall, you can select any of these options. And up here, here we have the property, here we have the wall type. So you can change it to maybe something that you prefer. And there we go, we have changed the type. And here also we can have some information about the length area volume and all other information on that wall. Here you can make it a structural wall. Speaking of structural walls, if you open up the uh, wall tool, here we have wall structural. So if you click there, you're creating a structural wall. Uh, now, okay, so the structural wall, let's go back is set uh, by default to depth so you have to change it to height in order to see it but there we go this is now a structural wall so if you select it there we go it says structural and it's checked and here you can select any of the types for the structural wall 
let's escape out of that. Uh, so here we have wall by face. So for that, you have to have some sort of an in place mass. So let me move this a bit down. And now let's go into 3D actually. And here I'm going to go and let's see. So let's see all of our hidden elements. There we go. So we have this thing hidden. So I'm just going to select it. And let's go like that. And then let's unhide elements. There we go. So I have this in place mass over here. So if you go here to wall, wall by face, and then you can just select one mass face. And there you go. This now has a wall. As you can see, this is a wall that has been applied to this warped weird looking face. Moving on in the wall tool, we still have the wall sweep and the wall reveal. The wall sweep will add a sweep to your wall. So if you go ahead here, select wall sweep, there you go. It kind of adds that sweep to your wall. And then if you go back here and go with the wall reveal, it's basically going to just take away some material from that wall. And of course, you can change it from horizontal to vertical if that's what you want. There you go. And that's what this looks like. Okay, there you go. That covers the wall tool. Moving on, we have the door tool. Let's go back to the floor plan. And for the door tool, you basically select it. You place it here. You can hit the space key to toggle it from one side to the other. Or just the way that you approach the wall will flip it from one side to the other. You place the door there. You can flip it again on one side, other side. And of course, uh, on each side of the wall. Here, you can select the door type. And that's pretty much it. Here, if you go into edit family, you can edit this door family. Windows work pretty much the same. Here you select the type of the window, you just come close to a wall, you place it there, you can flip it to the other side. In the properties you can set, select the sill height or the head height, or you can choose maybe a different family. Okay, there you go. We've covered Windows. Then we have the component tool. So if you just select the component tool, you can place one of the numerous components. These are the ones that are loaded in Revit. So let's just place a desk here. Let's go into 3D. There you go. You have a desk. That's a component. Also, you have the model in place options. So basically, you just set up the category. So you just go here, generic models. Let's go OK. And then you can just model generically whatever you want want. So you just go finish. There you go. So there you go. You have a generic family modeled. Moving on back to the architecture tab, let's go to columns. So if you just click over here, it's going to create a structural column. Here you set uh, from which level to which level it goes. You have the 3D snapping option that goes with uh, these structural columns. So you just click here or let's go to a level one for that. Yeah. So here you just go to column and then uh, you set level one and uh, the first click and the second click so you can just select it in here go from maybe or let's set it to vertical column I think this is the better option height unconnected and then you just click and there you go you have your column or you have these slanted columns but for those uh, I suggest you already have some columns in place and then you can uh, use that to snap from wherever so for example here slanted column and then you go from there to there and you have this weird looking slanted column if that's what you need. Uh, if you open up the drop menu, you're going to get the architecture columns. So architecture columns are a bit different and they're just placed like this, like regular columns. And then here you can set the base level, the, high, the top level, and that determines the height of the column. And here you can edit it if that's what you choose. Okay, moving on. Let's go back. Okay, here we have roofs. So if you click here, you have roof by footprint, and then you can just sketch it out. So you can just go like this rectangle, sketch it out, hit finish, and there you go. You have your roof. Now, if you go into edit footprint here, basically, if you have this triangle, that means that this defines a slope. You can change the slope here, maybe to 20. Then when you hit finish, as you can see, it looks like this. Also, if you don't want this to have that slope, you can just uncheck the find slope when that is selected. And as you can see now, you have no slope. So that's basically how you create these roofs in Revit. You can have the same options here in the properties panel, so you can even change it there. Okay, let's finish that. Let's go back to roof. If you expand the roof tool, here we have the roof by extrusion. So basically, you have this pick a plane. So let's pick this wall, for example. So let's just pick this front face. Here you set at which level your roof is going to be located. So just click OK. And then you can do like, I don't know, an arc just like that. You hit finish and let's cancel this. OK, there we go. And now you have your roof by extrusion and it looks like this. 
If you need a roof that looks like this, that's how you create it. If I open up the drop menu again, here we have roof by face. So you can just select any face like this one. And then you can choose a roof here in the properties. So whichever if you want to place like this one, you click on the plane, you go create roof. And there you go. We have this roof over here applied to this mass. Now just keep in mind that these roofs will not be able to be placed on any surfaces that have vertical areas or vertical elements. So perhaps this surface, I, I'm not sure, I don't think this could host a roof. So if I go here to roof by face, as you can see, I cannot select this vertical face. You would have to use a wall for that. Now for the rest of the roof tools, I'm going to be using this little house to explain how it works. So let's just open up the drop menu here on roofs. Let's go with the roof soffit. So if I let this menu expand, you're going to notice that that's basically this uh, area that covers uh, this hole here between the uh, between the roof and uh, and the house. So uh, to to model that, let's just go here and start that. So roof soffit, and let's place it on level two. And then you can just go here to level two floor plan. And here, uh, basically, you can create it just like uh, this. It should work like this. Or let's go down to level one just to find where the building walls are. Oops. So kind of like that. Okay, now if you go into 3D, it should look like this. So it should be covering basically that area between the edge of the roof and the walls of the house. So if you just hit finish, there we go. You have your... Uh, roof soffit area. Now this is the generic 300 millimeter. I suggest you maybe change it to something a bit uh, smaller or thinner. Here we can give it a bit of an offset uh, if you want to move it up or down, but of course you don't have to. Now moving on, uh, we have here the uh, roof fascia. So if you select that, you just select the edge and there you go, you get this roof fascia. Now in this case, it's very small. So you might want to uh, change it to a bigger fascia, something like uh, this. Apply. Okay, there we go. Okay, it's still small. But again, as you can see, that's how you basically add roof fascia. So you cover that ugly edge of the roof. So you don't see all of the roof layers. Moving on, we have the gutter, of course. So you just place it perhaps over here. And there you go. You have your gutter. So when the water flows down, it falls into this and it doesn't fall on you when you're walking down here. Okay, so that covers the roof tools. Let's go to the ceiling. Ceilings are pretty basic. So for the ceiling tool, you just go here to one of the ceiling plans. Let's go into level one ceiling plan. And you, you just go to ceiling and you either go with automatically or, uh, or sketch ceiling. So let's go automatic. You click once and there we go. You have your ceiling here. You just select the, uh, the tab. You just use the tab key to select it. And there we go. Now you can change it to a grid and there you go. It looks a bit better like this. And there you go. You have your ceiling. Moving on, you have your floors. So let's go to level one and here you can do your floor just by simple rectangle. And there you go. Oops, I keep missing this. There we go. So this is just your uh, floor here. You can change it in the properties, maybe a different type. You hit finish and when you go into 3D, there you go. You have your floor underneath your house. Moving on here for the floors, we have the structural floor option. So it works basically the same. It's just structural and not architectural. So here on the structural, it's checked. This one isn't, as you can see. So that's the difference. Uh, let's see what else do we have here. So we have the, uh, okay, floors. We have also floors by face. So here I have this mass that has a bunch of mass floors. So mass floors are like this. They're like 2D elements and they're just used for analytical purposes. But if you go here to floors and uh, floor by face, you can select these and then you go create floor. And there's, as you can see, now you have your solid floors there. Okay, let's go back. Do we have anything else? Yeah, we have the slab edge. So here you can use the slab edge on floors like this. So you can just go here to the edge of the floor and you add that slab edge and it looks like this. You can even change it, I think. If you go here into edit, yeah, you have multiple options like this. Hit apply. Okay. And there you go. You have your thick slab edge and you can actually flip it on the other side if you want. In this case, you shouldn't, but you can. Okay, there we go. So we've covered all of the floor tools. Let's go to the curtain system. So the curtain system is just, uh, again, if you have a mass like this, you just go here, the curtain system, you select this edge, you go create system. And there we go. You have your curtain wall on your weird wall.
and moving on we have the curtain grid so for that we have to go back to the wall tool and create just a storefront or let's go not with a storefront let's go with your curtain wall and here we go we have a just a transparent curtain wall so you go to the curtain uh, for your curtain grids you just go here and you do uh, maybe one segment you go close to the edge and then you basically add segments to this thing just like that now of course uh, you have multiple options you have this one segment option if you want to add that maybe make it look a bit more interesting you can go with this tool so it's basically everything except one and then also here you have the emollients so you can do emollients on maybe one grid line or one grid segment or you can just do all grids and there you go you've covered it all going back here we have railing so just if you click here you sketch it out and then you can do i don't know like this and there you go you have your railing you can flip it to the other side and here in properties you can change it to something else if that's what you choose now also here for the railing we have place on stair or ramp i'm going to go come back to this after we've placed our ramp and stair so let's go to the ramp so for the ramp it's pretty simple you just set the base level and top level now uh, going having a ramp from level one to level two it's going to be quite a difficult so i'm just going to go from level one to level one with the offset of half a meter so just click once click again hit finish and there you go you have your ramp that's just going half a meter up and immediately get this railing now let's say you accidentally delete your railing well go back to the railing tool place on stair or ramp then here you choose the type of the railing and then you select this and there you go you have your railing back on your ramp now for the stair it's pretty simple you just select the level one level two here you enter your desired number of steps and Reva does all of the calculations here the riser height will be 18 centimeters or almost 19 so if i make this maybe 17 now it's a bit more comfortable of a stair and then you just make either one run or or maybe you can do like two runs that are connected uh, with a landing in between and once you hit finish there you go you even get your railing so there you go moving on let's say let's see here we have model text so you just select that you type in text and then you click ok and then you can pretty much place it anywhere and there you go you have your model text and here you can even edit it so you can change the height to like something bigger or you can change the font to something uh, to something a bit more silly hit apply ok and there you go you have your 3d text now you can uh, so I add it to a different work plane or whatever but that's basically how your text tool works uh, moving on we have the model line so model lines are these 3d lines they're usually green and you can just place them anywhere uh, if you want to represent something with just the line work next we have the model group so if you open up this tool you have place group now for that first we have to have a group and for that let's go into create group so you just go here you name it group one let's leave it at that and then you just select elements so you just go here to add to group and then you can select this i don't know this there and i know this model line then you go finish and now as you can see this is a group which you can kind of move around there we go also now once you have this group in your project you can go here to model group and place group and now you can place this group multiple times here you can of course select it and then go into edit group and then maybe edit something if that's what you want to do or alternatively you can just ungroup these elements and then play around with them later on okay so that's for the group elements now here if you have groups or other projects opened up you can load the groups from those projects if that's something that you want to do now the rest of the tools i'm going to be showing you on this building example just because we need some rooms so let's check out the room and area tab so or palette so here we have first the rooms now for that you have to go here into the level one floor plan to use the tool so here for rooms you just select them and then you place rooms now in this case for example this room two it includes both the entrance area the kitchen and the living room so if you want to divide that into multiple rooms you have to use the room separator tool so just select it and then you go from one wall to the other and then perhaps uh, here like that and then if you go back here 
you're going to notice that this is just one room now so you can then go here and place rooms like that there we go so now we have one room here one room here and one room here and of course when you select each room here in properties you're going to get information for each room like the area the perimeter and the whatever else information you need and of course you can go here and just select the tag and here you can rename this into living room okay there you go so that concludes the rooms here we have the tag room option so if one of these uh, tags goes missing you can always go and just tag that room or you can just add multiple room tags to one room if that's something you want to do i don't suggest you do that okay so let's go back let's actually delete all of these rooms and let me then show you the area option and then we can get rid of these as well okay so for area you go here to area and then you have to go to area plan now let's go to area plan for level one and then you just go here and let Revit automatically create an area plan but it just outlines the outer uh, the outer walls so then you go here into uh, area or actually the area boundary tool and then you can add more just by using the pick lines and then for example i'm just going to hover over this wall hit the tab key once and then here this is a separate area this is a new area and so we have a few areas so then we can say that this is Go, go back to the architecture tool and then uh, we can say this is the living area this is whatever sleeping area and this is whatever work area and then you can go here to area and just go to area again and then you set one area the other and third one and then of course you can rename this like living area or something like that i don't know and this can then be working there we go so that's how areas work and here again we have area tags so you can add multiple tags if that's something that you desire okay moving on let's go to openings so the openings while we're here in the floor plan let's take a look at the wall openings so you just select it and then you just do a couple of clicks like that and there you go you create this weird opening so it just creates openings in walls and then you can select it in 3d and just move it around play a little bit but it will always be a rectangular opening so keep that in mind but here also you have information like the top offset, the base offset, and the base and top level constraints. So there we go, that's uh, the wall opening. Then we have the uh, by face opening. So if, for example, here in the roof, if you want to have a by face opening, you just select that roof face and then you go with a little circle and you hit finish and there you go you have a face opening then we also have a shaft opening that this is a shaft that will go through all of the levels so if you just go like this click finish and then you extend that shaft as you can see it goes all the way through even through the floor so that's how shaft openings work so you can have those as well then we have the okay the wall opening we've covered that then you have the vertical opening so you select just the roof and then you do a circle but you have to do it kind of like this you hit finish and then you have another opening as you can see this opening is cutting vertically and this one is cutting perpendicularly to the uh to the roof face and if you have a dormer like this you just go here to the dormer opening tool you select like the roof that you're cutting into then you go with pick edges and then you just have to pick the exact edges so you just pick this edge pick this edge you then pick this front wall face and then you pick these side walls it's a bit tricky to make that selection so let's see yeah when it's tricky like this you can always go here into wireframe and then you can pick this uh, wall Face. there we go now let's go back to regular hidden line and then you just use trim and extend to trim and extend all of this so just go like that and there we go you have an opening now of course it's not visible here but as you can see when you select the the roof that's where the opening is going to be just underneath that dormer and you're cutting into the roof so everything looks perfect okay so that covers the openings let's now go to datum elements now for that you have to go maybe to one of the elevations and here you can add more levels if that's what you want you can also add grids if that's something you need also you can add grids in the uh, floor plan and there we go that's how you add grids and of course we have the work planes so whenever you're working in Revit you want to set the work plane correctly so you just go here to set work plane pick a plane okay and then you pick 
a plane. Now, if you want to see that plane, you go here to show plane. And as you can see now, Revit is showing you where that plane is. Or uh, perhaps if you want to uh, look perpendicularly through the to the plane, you have this uh, ref show, or you have this uh, ref reference plane viewer. So you just select that, and then here, this is a window that should be zooming in to your. Okay, here we go. This is the plane. There we go. So this is kind of looking perpendicularly into that plane. So let's exit out of this. And also, if you're going to level one, you have this ref plane option. So you can actually create new reference planes and you can name them. And then you can use those to maybe model something on that. So there you go. That covers all of the tools on the architecture tab. I hope you have learned something new, perhaps, or just got interested a little bit in the architecture tab. And then you can explore it further by checking some some of my other uh, tutorials in Revit. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this quick little video. Well, well, it's not that quick, but we've covered all of the architecture tools. And I think that's uh, really cool to do inside of one video just to just to show the power of Revit and all of the architectural tools. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Again, as I said, if you want to check out some of my advanced courses, or if you want to get these Revit project files, check out my Patreon first link in the description. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for any future tutorials, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.